All right, guys, so here I am, and we are going into round two of the blind reviews. There's been a couple elements that have been removed, such as the original packaging, which you guys know kind of keyed me off last time. So uh, this will be interesting. I'm going to go ahead and just start kind of cutting it open and, uh, yeah, getting at it. Alright, so here is the knife. Alright, we'll let you guys get a good look. Hopefully, again, there is no focus issues. Alright, let's see what we've got. It feels like there are wood scales on this. Oh, maybe not. That might be like a smoother G10. So there's the knife for you guys. Take a look. And just move it around like last time so you guys can get a look. I can feel there is a flipper tab. The blade is clearly on the front of this one. So I know that this isn't a front flipper like last time. Okay, I can feel the pocket clip. Feel a pivot there. It's got a back spacer. Oh, sorry, I got the snibbles. I was out shoveling snow. I'm gonna rub my nose real quick. So I'm feeling it. I feel some jimping on the blade. I feel kind of some ridges here in the, um, in the back spacer of the, the knife. Feels like a little bit of a heavier knife. Um, we got no jimping on the tab. Let's see, the pivot is. Well, that's odd. The pivot feels like a flathead. Oh, wait, maybe not. Huh. So that's a little interesting. Interesting note is the pivot feels. The pivot feels different. We'll just start off with that. The pivot feels different from what I'm used to on the pivot. So, alright, it feels heavier. It's about. It's a good size knife, um, like a medium, I would say this is a medium sized knife. Feels like it's got steel liners, yep, okay, so it's got steel liners, so we've got some sort of scale material, yeah, def definitely not wood, definitely not wood. Alright, I'm going to go, that's either my, yeah, that's G10, that's got to be like a, a polished G10. Alright, I guess let's uh, open the knife, I'm going to take my hand back. Uh, it does have a flipper, and we'll see what the action is like. So a little bit of a stronger detent to get that going. Um, let's see what we've got. We've got kind of a, a, a choil here for the finger, and kind of like a little bit of a curved handle. So ergonomics feel like they're going to be pretty good, and they are. Let's see if this has a finger choil. So not, not a finger choil, no finger choil here. So pretty comfortable in the hand. Um, actually really comfortable in the hand from what I'm noticing. So let's see, is it a liner lock? Okay, it is a liner lock. Almost feels like almost feels like a frame lock under the, the scale material. So I'm gonna go with this a little bit of a, this is a thicker liner lock. It's, it's chamfered, so that's always really nice. So attention to detail, you got a chamfered liner lock right here, so it's nice and easy on the thumb. This reminds me, I've had this on a couple knives, so this reminds me of a couple knives, but so far, I'm kind of drawing some blanks. I don't have any real clues yet. Let me close it up and kind of just feel my way around. So you've got a deep carry pocket clip. Let's see. Feels like it goes into the handle. So you've got a deep carry pocket clip that goes into the handle. There's something going on here though. Is that a lanyard? All right, so you've got a lanyard hole. The back spacer feels like it's Feels like it's metal too, so you got kind of like a ridged metal backspacer. You've got no thumb stud, no opening hole, so just flipper. It does really have a strong detent. Let's see how the oh, it's wow. All right, so that's nice. All right, let's get into the blade. What are we dealing with the blade? So it's got a taper. A slight taper to the tip, kind of a wider blade, but not too wide. So I would say the blade is about, once again, I'm gonna guess on this one, that this is about three inches. The action is really nice, I'm, I'm kind of digging it. In hand, for some reason, my, my in my head, the picture is like the, kind of like a little, like a, almost like a crooked river, and I know this is not that by any means, because it doesn't have an access lock, but 
trying to figure out what's going on here. I'm gonna go, this is a little bit heavier, so we'll say, I'm gonna go just, I'm gonna go right around like a high three, low four, maybe four, four mid fours on this one. The detent is stiff, but it, it, there's the payoff. The payoff is that deployment. And then the action, so it's on bearings. I gotta say that this has to be on bearings. Once it gets past that detent, so, I'm trying to picture in my head what this could be, and I'm not getting anything. The, the action, it kind of reminds me a little bit of a CVV. I'm just like the strong detent and the payoff, and then how nice it is to drop it. So maybe I'm getting closer there with that whole, uh, the whole CVV thing. So maybe a CVV or something along those lines, maybe a Wii knife. This pivot screw though, something's going on with this pivot screw. I want to say it reminds me, why does it feel like a flathead? But it only feels like a flathead going to one side. It's almost like similar to like the sheer Gorb screws, where it's like a partial flathead, but not all the way. So I'm going to say it's a forward knife, um, just based off of some of the some of the features I'm noticing. So it's a forward knife, maybe going towards Best Tech or Kaiser something along those lines, and I'm not super familiar with the Kaiser line, a little bit more with the Wii's. You know, this might even be a cheap knife, guys. This really could. This might be a cheap knife. Because the pivot screw, this little, like, flathead thing here, let me, I don't know if you guys have seen it yet, if you guys can see that. It feels a little rough, almost. So, fit and finish on this part here is a little rough. So that kind of clues me in. Maybe, maybe I need to go lower end on what we're dealing with here. Let's, let's check for blade play real quick. Did I do that? Did the lock just fail or did I accidentally... Oh. <laughs> Maybe it is a ZT. That reminds me a lot of the ZT-06 um, or ah, whatever the one was that I covered on my channel. But um, that's what it reminded me of. It feels like there's a little bit of lock fail. Hmm. Interesting. Well, that will make the review line for sure. All right. Guess we're going to count down to the big reveal here shortly. So, yeah, I got to go. This is a budget knife. There's just a couple little things. The hard detent, the lock failing, and the unfinished pivot. I'm going to go sub $100. Um... It does have a nice deep carry pocket clip, and it's not like the ones that like a lot of the Chinese companies use, like um, the rake knives and the Civivis use a certain kind of pocket clip. It's kind of cut and paste on all of them. This one's not like that. This one's a little bit of a different one. But in hand, it's actually really good. The um, I, I give it props on this pocket clip. It's not a hot spot whatsoever. It actually just seems to kind of melt into your hand. So um, really good ergonomics on how it fits in the hand. And overall, that's kind of where I'm at. I don't know what else I can give you guys without the sense of sight. Let's see how does it feel. Does it feel blade centered? It feels like it's off center, but who the hell knows? I don't know. All right, well, consider me perplexed. All right, you guys, I'm going to wrap this up now, and we're going to get going. I really uh, I don't want to give up. If I figure it out, I'll just kind of fast forward through it. I'm going to play with this for a few more minutes. Um, but if it cuts out right about now, then I didn't figure it out and I'm going to admit defeat. But I'll keep it on camera and just kind of play with it and let you guys know what I think. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have a thought. Just as I was playing with it, so we're still here, we're all still here. There is an off chance, I'm going to say that this is a Kubi knife. I don't know why, but I got one from Jimmy Slash and has very similar action. Um, it's on ball bearings. This one feels a lot nicer. So, all right, those are, I guess I guess those are my, my guesses with the uh, Sabibi slash Best Pack tile brands or possibly Kubi. But for some reason, I in my gut, something along the lines of that Kubi kind of feels a little bit better because of how close it is in quality, really good quality, but little finishes like on the pivot here in the lock issue, 
kind of led, led me towards a nice budget Chinese brand. So along the lines of those Kubis and whatnot. All right, guys, I'm done rambling. That's it. I give up. And uh, now time for the reveal. All right, here we are, guys, looking at this together uh, for the first time on camera. I have had this off camera for a couple of days just to play around with it and get my thoughts and impressions on it. And this will be an expedited kind of end of video review. I know you guys want to go check out the other ones. So we'll talk about it really quickly and then I will let you guys be on your way. Go check out these other channels. Um, it's going to be going to be a good one. So this knife here, this is the Harns Talisman. Big thanks to Power Cutlery for providing this knife uh, for this little blind review pass along. Uh, I'll put all their information down below. And I'm probably through something in the intro as well. But yeah, so big thanks to them. That was really awesome of them to kind of uh, sponsor this whole thing. Okay, now we got all that out of the way. Let's talk about just my initial thoughts and impressions. I think this is a really well done attention to detail uh, budget offering from a Chinese brand. I like a lot about it. You can see I was getting caught up on the Crooked River. I knew that it wasn't because it didn't have the access lock. But I'm going to throw just a picture of the Cro Crooked River in here now. So I'm pretty happy with how I visualize this knife in my head. You can see the back spacer. So I can see where I came up with that. But one of the things that clued me off to uh, it possibly being a budget Chinese brand was, was the detent being the way it is because it's similar to one of the Kubi knives I have. And then this chamfered lock bar is similar to the one I have on my CH uh, 3504. So to me, I was kind of like in that, like a Kubi um, CH and Harns. I, I'd never handled the Harns. I had seen them. I think I've seen it on Nasty Renegade's channel. He's covered... Maybe this one. He might think he has covered the Talisman, actually. So, I'll throw his channel down below, too, guys. Go check him out. He's one of my favorite um, European knife reviewers. Overall, this is pretty damn good. But the, the detent, the unfinished edge, and let's touch on this really quickly. The potential. I'm going to say potential because it's not being deployed via the flipper tab, which does give it a little bit of extra authority. Let's see, now I can't get it to do it. There we go. So there's a potential for a lock failure there. Um, that kind of lets me. I, I would I would pass on this knife if it was in my cart and I had something else in the thirty dollar range that I wanted to check out. I would probably pass on this. But that doesn't take away from the fact that this was a really fun project. This is a pretty well executed knife. Power Cutlery is awesome for pro providing this. Go check out their stuff. They have a nice little uh, range of knives. So that's my thoughts and impressions on this, guys. Um, pretty cool knife. Pretty happy to have it. Thanks to uh, everybody who is in this little thing that we're doing. Go check out their videos, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Have a good one. We'll see you all really soon.